Hey there, and welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio. So this is a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a kinder, healthier, and more sustainable world. And I can't tell you how happy I am that you have joined us today. Uh, we have a wonderful show uh, before us. But if this show is, is new to you, uh, just to little, give you a little bit of a background about you know what it's about, is that you know the program itself uh, I've designed to be uh, one that's exciting and fun, um, but also very educational educational and will ultimately excite and ignite you in terms of your world of possibilities and feelings of hope, even in the midst of, you know, the curveballs that we've all had uh, thrown our way or may have thrown our way in the future. Uh, I'm an integrative psychologist, so I'm not a physician, but I am a, a physician, uh, I mean, a, 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 a advanced raw food nutrition educator. I'm a, a, raw food, I'm a raw food chef. I do a lot of different things, and I'm mostly a student of life and an educator and I've been doing therapy over 30 years as a psychologist and, and counselor. And I'm here to help you heal from the inside out and so that you can feel better, live better, and love better as you face each day. So like you, I'm very concerned about what's going on on the planet and with our health situation. And this is so, this is a show where we are addressing uh, some of those tough things that are real issues in your life. And we, we just face them head on, and, and I bring in some of the best uh, educators around it, uh, researchers and leaders in the medical field and in the environmental field and so forth to help us you know, shed light on what, what is known now and how you can be as empowered as possible. If you'd like to contribute to help support this program or you have any products or services that you want to share with my terrific audience, please go to the TeresaNicasio.com website to make a donation, or you can contact me directly via email or my website. And the website is very easy to remember. It's just my name, Teresa with an H, T-H-E-R-E-S-A, Nicasio with an N like Nancy, I C A. Two S's like Sam S S I O dot com T H E R E S A dot uh, Nicasio dot com, and the uh, email is just as easy. It's Teresa at Teresa Nicasio dot com. On average, HealthyLife.net has over one and a half million listeners each month, syndicated and simulcast over 130 countries. Uh, with this in, uh, international exposure being as broad as it is, it's really a wonderful way to spread the word about your business. Be sure to tune in next week when radio show host Marianne Pestana will be joining us talking about making every moment count. But on today's show, we have with us Ricky Heller, a woman who has a parallel story to my own. For those of you who are familiar with my story that I share and on my social media and on my book Yum, um, but her story has a very significant twist. Uh, so not only did Ricky's world turn upside down when health issues forced her to cut out foods like gluten, sugar, eggs, and dairy, but the kicker is that her livelihood was as a professional baker, and so I didn't have that little twist, which is a big, big one. So uh, Ricky had a big uh, challenge in front of her, but she decided not to give up the profession that she had uh, that had kept a roof over her head and food on her table, but instead she decided to study holistic nutrition and recreate her favorite recipes, but in healthier forms. And she now shares her recipes and information through individual coaching as well as through her blog and online programs uh, that are for people on restricted diets. Ricky is also the author of two best-selling cookbooks. One is called Naturally Sweet and Gluten-Free, and the other is Living Candida-Free. Uh, she was also recently a nominee for the 2016 Canadian Holistic Nutrition Awards, so that's exciting. Today, Ricky is going to be talking about candida, the topic that, you know, as far as when I think of Ricky, I think that this has really been her uh, flagship, and it's also why I wanted to invite her on the show. Uh, most importantly, Ricky is going to help demystify today uh, for you what candida is, because some of you know and some of you are probably shaking your head going, what is that, candida? Um, and also shed light on what it means if by chance your healthcare provider has already told you or does tell you in the future uh, that candida overgrowth is a problem for you, and she's going to help you feel more equipped to tackle it and free yourself from its grip through uh, just through lifestyle, some nutrition things that you can do. Again, I want to clarify that Ricky is not a physician, but she 
was again a professional baker turned cook turned turned uh, turned gluten free sugar free chef and such. So uh, that's where she's coming from as you listen to our show today. So, Ricky, thank you so much for joining us. I, I have to tell you, there are so many people uh, that are excited about what you're going to be talking about. I've been telling people and saying, you've got to listen to this show, especially some of my clients and friends. So thank you for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, well, this is great. Um, you know, let's start with that obvious question, Ricky, because a lot, like I said in the in the intro here, a lot of people are probably scratching their head, going, "What, Candida?" I remember when I first heard that word years ago. I thought, "What is that?" It just sounded, it sounded strange. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you know? You have a reader, Reader's Digest uh, description, but what you know, what Candida is, and um, you know, just kind of shed light on that for those, especially for those of you listeners who have never heard about it before. Sure. So candida albicans, or if you're in the medical profession, they pronounce it candida, and it's an organism. It's a type of yeast that lives normally in our body, so it's one of the many microbes that lives in our gut, or what we call the microbiome, with all the other bacteria and germs and parasites and all the little critters that live inside our intestines. And normally, it's just a benign member of this community, and so, you know, we, we're finding out more and more that Everything works together in, in our intestinal tract, and, and so much of our immune system is housed in there, and it really relies on this balance among all these different organisms. But the thing with candida is it can very easily grow out of control. So I, th- I always use the analogy of a, of a beautiful lawn that might have one or two weeds, and you can think of the candida as the weeds, and they might be necessary for uh, certain functions in the whole, but if it's a healthy lawn, it's going to keep them under control. But when you have conditions that allow those weeds to grow out of control, they can take over the whole lawn and then everything dies, right? So candida is very much the same. If there's any kind of imbalance that happens in your gut, it's going to allow that candida to just start proliferating and go wild. And that's when we start getting all of these uncomfortable symptoms that we know of as candida or candida-related complex. Um, and so for most people, there's a trigger, and, and we, we, we know that antibiotics, for instance, kill up to 95% of the bacteria in the gut, in, including good and bad. So mm-hmm. once the good bacteria are wiped out, that's when candida can swoop in and take up those positions along the intestinal wall. Or if you've had, you know, excessive stress, or if you've been taking a lot of medications, whether prescription or over-the-counter. Basically anything that can upset the balance, and then candida is such an opportunistic organism that it begins to grow and, and proliferate that way. Mm-hmm. Well, this, you know, antibiotics, uh, how about um, this, because uh, antibiotics and, you know, you go around, if you ask probably, you know, in North America, uh, 100 people, how many people have ever had been on antibiotics? It would, it's it's you're pretty hard-pressed to find very many, if any, who have. I know. I know. <laughs> and, and one of the things that's great is in recent years, you know, doctors have begun to recognize that, that we're actually eliminating our good bacteria at the same time. So they're doing things like prescribing yogurt, which has live bacterial cultures to replace some of those lost good bacteria. So, I mean, you can compensate for that if you know what you're doing and if you feed your gut with what it needs to replace the bacteria. And I would even do it while I'm taking the antibiotics. But mm-hmm. a lot of people didn't, like from my generation, who knew, right? So mm-hmm. and I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a baby, I'm like a baby, baby boomer. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, when I was a teenager, I was prescribed antibiotics for acne. I took antibiotics for like six months and did nothing to try to replace the good gut bacteria. So that's one of the, I think that's one of the the reasons why I was more predisposed. And I had, you know, various things throughout the years. I had strep throat in my 20s. I had sinus infections, um, a whole bunch of stuff. So, and not only antibiotics. I pretty much had every one of the risk factors, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little about that. And, you know, first, you know, in terms of medications, you mentioned prescriptions. Because I, as I recall, I think things like steroids or corticosteroids, which, again, anybody who has inhalers, uh, certain kinds of inhalers that are preventative, anti-inflammatory, um, uh, aren't those, don't those also um, contribute or is that, because uh, I thought that might contribute to things, you know, the inhalers, but also the, yeah. uh, you know, any other kind of steroids. So those have, those play a role, don't they, in terms of the candida? Yeah, apparently people who use those, they're much more susceptible to yeast infections and yeast overgrowth as well. Mm -hmm. So 
again, what it's basically doing is it's just disrupting the balance, and it's it's creating a situation that is more amenable for that yeast to grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so are there other prescriptions that uh, people might be on or have taken in the past that might that you're familiar with that are that are some of the the big kahunas that, that contribute to this yeast overgrowth, this candida overgrowth? Well, I would say pretty much, you know, any prescription drug or even over-the-counter drug because it's putting a strain on the system. Your liver is working overtime when you have these these toxins in the body. It's trying to clear out the residue of the medication. But the one that you hear most often is the birth control pill. That's mm. a biggie. So people who've been on the birth control pill, again, it's, it's one of the heavier risk factors. I mean, if you're on a prescription medication like an antibiotic for short term and you have a healthy body and you replace the missing gut bacteria, then I would say, you know, probably you're not a huge risk. But mm-hmm. if you look at someone who's been on something long term or multiple medications, um, that would be my, my guess is that, that, you know, obviously the more you take, the more of a risk you have. Mm-hmm. And we see a lot more of, of that as well. Well, if you're mentioning about the liver um, working over time, is it, what about alcohol? Need, Again, need, also um, because alcohol, so anything, if you think about candida, it's a fungus, and so um, it's in the, fam- the mold family, so they like to feed on sugar. So mm-hmm. anything that's ferment, like alcohol is fermented with sugar, right? It has a high mm-hmm. sugar content. So that's going to be something that could trigger an overgrowth of yeast. Anything that has sugar in it. So, so again, I grew up in a home where, you know, basically I learned to bake when I was about six years old. Everybody loved to bake in my family, my mother, my sisters. We loved sweet things. I consider myself uh, a sugar addict. I've come to that realization over the years. And so we ate a lot of sweet things in our house and a lot of mm-hmm. sugar. And that's a contributing factor because you're feeding the candida with the sugar and, and anything refined that's easily converted to sugar, like white flour or white potatoes, that kind of thing as well. So if you're someone who has that kind of diet, and I mean, if you think about it, it's pretty much the standard American diet. It is a lot of refined foods with, you know, there's that, the, the triad of sugar, fat, and salt, right? So if we have high sugar foods, refined foods, highly processed foods, all of that stuff, it just creates an environment where it's rife. Candida can, can just grow. Yeah. Well, I imagine some of you guys listening are, are going, oh, gosh, do I want to continue <laughs> listening? You probably want to cry already because <laughs> it's like there's just so much things. And, we're, you know, we're going to get to, I just want you to know that, that Ricky is all about empowerment and, and as I am as well, that sometimes it can feel overwhelming, like, oh, my God, I can't eat this or this. If I eat that, it's more blah, blah, blah. So just if you can hang with us, that would be great because um, because it's, it's not all grim and, and depressing, but, we you know, we do have some uplifting things, but it, it is important to understand, then, and we're going to get into, why don't we get into um, uh, a little bit more, Ricky, the dark side. Um, mm-hmm. I always like to start on the dark side and then we move out. Um, talk a little bit more about the symptoms, because those, they're not pretty, so just, just put on your seatbelt, folks. Um, mm-hmm. what, what are some of the symptoms that... Um, and don't be shy, Ricky. You know, you know, you know my audience here is, is brave. So uh, you know, just just put it out there what what the symptoms are because some things are, are less pleasant to, to even talk about. Sure. So if again, as I said, you're dealing with a yeast or a fungus. So any kind of fungal issue is often a tip off that you're dealing with candida overgrowth. So for women, it could be vaginal yeast infections, and particularly if these are things that don't clear up with treatment that or or keep returning. So, you know, I had a series of infections when I was in my 30s that no matter what I did, they just, every two weeks, I just ended up with another yeast infection. So that's, that's how you know. It's not something that happens once and goes away. Um, or, and any other kind of fungal infections, things like athlete's foot or toenail fungus or jock itch, which is a fungal infection. Um, some people believe that blepharitis, which is inflammation of the eyelids, has a fungal component or it can have mm. a fungal component. Yeah. Uh, and so things like that. And then the other thing is um, we've recently found that the majority of sinus infections are actually fungal in nature versus bacterial in nature. So for, it's really? in my case, yeah. So as in my case, when I had four sinus infections in the space of three months and I was given six courses of antibiotics, that might have actually been creating an environment that was beneficial to the fungus versus trying to kill it. So um, mm-hmm. now I really I try to treat 
sinus infections with sort of antifungals first, natural antifungals that I use, or I use sinus flush or something like that, rather than go straight to antibiotics. And obviously, I'm not opposed to antibiotics, but, you know, I think they're lifesavers in the right conditions. But if you don't need them, then you don't want to take them. And so that's um, antibiotics, as I said, can trigger some of these symptoms too. So there's the whole range of fungal things, but one of the main symptoms that people get is overwhelming sugar cravings because that's the candida asking for food, or I won't even say asking, I'll say demanding food. So you get these sugar cravings that are like off the charts, things where, you know, I remember I used to, I was one of those people <laughs> that it could be a quarter to midnight and I'm working, you know, on, on the university paper at home or something like that, and I would get up, put on my shoes, and go to the corner store to buy something sweet, like a like an ice cream or a chocolate bar, a piece of cake or whatever, because it, there was this craving that you literally almost couldn't control yourself. Mm-hmm. So overwhelming cravings for sugar and refined things, that's another huge one. And then what people call foggy thinking mm-hmm. or foggy brain, where you feel as if literally your your mind is working through a fog. And it's hard to describe unless you've experienced it. You know, I, I had various levels of candida over the years. I probably have been dealing with it since my teens, I would say. But I didn't realize this until uh, the, the last time um, when I was diagnosed and treated. I, I remember thinking that I just couldn't concentrate on anything. I, couldn't, I felt like I couldn't think straight. And I've always had a pretty good memory, I would say. And particularly, I'm one of those people who has that bizarre skill of remembering phone numbers after I hear them once. Wow. Um, and I couldn't even remember, you know, my sister's phone number. It was crazy. I, I was, you know, I'd be reading and I would have to read the same line six or seven times. And then when I was finally put on a prescription antifungal at that time, within 48 hours, it was literally as if you had your curtains drawn and somebody opened the curtains and then everything was sharp and clear again. And, and I had never quite understood what, what was meant by foggy thinking until I had it and it cleared up. So people often describe it as, you know, not being able to concentrate, but as if, you know, there's a blur on the screen, on the window. It's just everything is a little bit foggy. And that's a big one as well. Wow. You know, that sounds, you know, I think a lot of you who are listening have probably had foggy brain. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have candida overgrowth, mm-hmm. although given that it, uh, in, and later we're going to be talking a little bit about the prevalence, but um, but it doesn't mean you necessarily have it, but it's certainly, uh, you know, it's, it's good to have on the radar because if it is there, if you if you don't know it, then it can really be a bugger and, and um, take you over a bit. But if you do know, there's things you can do. But, you know, one thing I'm thinking, Rick, as you're talking is how there seems to be more and more people who are talking about feeling like they have chronic fatigue. And I've seen this, this seems like there's a, a, a bit of overlap. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, chronic fatigue and, and candida? You know, at least the foggy brain piece is certainly an overlapping um, uh, symptom. Anything else that any other uh, symptoms yeah, that I overlap actually, with that? Uh, I, I didn't mention fatigue, but that's a huge one as well. Um, mm-hmm. it be, there's just sometimes overwhelming fatigue. I had a client who... Literally, she hadn't gotten out of bed for about eight months before we started working together. She she said she wow. could barely get out, she'd stand up to, you know, take a drink of water or go to the washroom, and that was it. So mm-hmm. people, eat, and that's you know, we're, that's down the road once once this is something that's become more serious and has taken hold. But in terms of symptoms, I also just wanted to say, I mean, like as you mentioned, it, just because you might have foggy thinking doesn't necessarily mean that you're dealing with the candida. But what you're looking for are perhaps several of the symptoms or intensity or long term. So, mm-hmm. and things are not getting better, they're often getting worse as, it, as time goes on. So, mm-hmm. I guess, as in my case, you know, I started with one symptom and then a few years later another one showed up and eventually I was dealing with a whole litany of symptoms and nothing seemed to make it better mm-hmm. when I realized that, you know, I had to do something about this. Mm-hmm. Well, and the other thing uh, that can happen, too, is you're mentioning that when the body starts, the integrity of the health starts to, to go down, uh, then these opportunistic um, buggers, whether it's yeast or other bacteria or, or viruses, uh, they, they come on in. So, so sometimes it's not just a single factor that might be contributing, whether it's chronic fatigue or some other, fact, uh, some other kind of condition, uh, but it certainly it also can be a layered, a layered one. Anyway, Absolutely. We, we, we have so much more to talk about. Uh, this is, I'm so happy you're here, Ricky. This is, this is a huge, huge topic. Uh, so 
stick around, folks. Um, we'll be right back with more talking with Ricky about Candida after the break. Inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- 445-6463. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call earthchannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. Yumfoodforliving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit yumfoodforliving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit yumfoodforliving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. For those of you who are just joining us, on today's show we're talking with best-selling author of Living Candida Free, um, Ricky Heller. She's talking up today about the topic of candida that's very close to her heart. And uh, before the break, for those of you who were with us, you know, we've been enjoying hearing uh, a little bit about uh, um, Ricky's own experience with candida, but also some of the common symptoms and, and so forth around this this very, as, as you've been listening, it's very, very significant. It can have a huge impact on your life, even somewhat debilitating, if not significantly debilitating. Um, but, Ricky, with all this that we're talking about, all these, these uh, potential symptoms the, from, this, from this bugger, um, why is it that so many people have never heard of candida before? Yeah, well, I think that's that's beginning to change. I mean, when I was first diagnosed in 1999, it was almost unheard of. And as I started blogging about my experience and started doing research to see, you know, who would who could help me, I found more and more people who had heard about it or thought they were dealing with it. And I think part of it is that, you know, and, and I hear from people all the time who say, I've been from doctor to doctor to doctor, and nobody has diagnosed me with candida, or if they approach a doctor and say, or a physician and say, I think I have candida, they're told that that isn't possible. And I think part of this sort of paradox is because in the holistic alternative world versus the allopathic conventional medical world, we're actually talking about two different things but using the same word. 
And so in conventional medicine, at least up until recently, because I think there has been a shift with functional medicine doctors who are actually physicians that take a more holistic approach, but if you're looking at conventional medicine, when they refer to candida or candida or systemic candidiasis, what they're actually talking about is a bloodborne, you know, the, the fungus into the bloodstream, which is an acute immune system emergency, and it's critical. If someone has a fungal infection in the bloodstream, they are basically on the brink of death unless they're treated immediately. And mm-hmm. often that will only happen, people will only end up in that situation if they already have a compromised immune system. So people like AIDS patients or cancer patients who've been getting chemotherapy and their immune system isn't functioning at the top level. But when when I say candida or when, you know, what I'm referring to and what I understand from holistic healthcare professionals is it's actually another term for it is a dysbiosis or an imbalance in the intestinal tract. So when we say candida, we're talking about that overgrowth that I mentioned, and the symptoms are actually more a result of the toxins that are emitted by the organism. So candida in the yeast form, which is the way it lives in the intestinal tract, benignly and it's supposed to be there you know up to a certain level it's just part of the normal internal environment that's a yeast form that is pretty benign but when it starts to proliferate like that and grow out of control it converts into what we call a fungal form and that's when it begins to um, grow these hyphae which are like long roots or tendrils that come out of the organism Mm -hmm. and those can burrow into the walls of the intestinal tract, and it's all the toxins that are given off by that organism that cause all those symptoms that we think about. So we're really dealing with an imbalance in the gut, and also it affects the immune system. But interestingly, like recently, as I said, it's becoming more and more common to talk about candida, and functional medicine is recognizing candida and um, one of the descriptions that I read recently was more sort of on the spectrum. So, you know, there's normal, then there's you might have a little bit of candida overgrowth, which is fairly easy to rebalance. But as it gets worse and worse and worse, you may ultimately become so sick that you end up with that kind of bloodborne. Um, mm-hmm. But, again, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know how that, how, how that works. But, mm-hmm. I, you know, I do know that with this condition, people who don't address it, and continue to let that candida keep growing, they do end up getting sicker and sicker over time. Yeah. Well, you know, we had Dr. Alicia Fazzano on, way, well, back in, what was that, February, end of February, um, and he was talking about uh, a lot of things, but he was talking more about gluten, gliadin, uh, zonulin, and how zonulin receptor, you know, the zonulin gets it gets produced by because of the being triggered by by a part of the gluten molecule which opens up some of the the uh, lining of the gut. But, um, you know, there's other things that can create intestinal permeability or what we call leaky gut. And as you're talking about these roots uh, growing into the lining of the gut, what, what's your understanding of the, um, the, how that impacts the, the permeability or impermeability of the gut lining, if you, have, if you know about that at all? Yeah, so that actually is one of the factors in creating leaky gut. So it's almost universal that if someone has candida overgrowth, they also have leaky gut. And so you need to kill off the, can- the excess candida and seal the gut, re- you know, reheal the gut so before you can be rid of the candida um, mm-hmm. you know, permanently. Right. So, yeah, it's and very, very common for them to work together. Right. And so just again, it's, it, this is another one of those words that I think people get, get like, oh, I don't have leaky gut, and what's that leaky gut? Oh, my, my gut doesn't leak. Um, it's like, how do you know that you've got a leaky gut? What is a leaky gut? Uh, what, what, when people ask you that, how do you respond, uh, Ricky? So leaky gut, this is the way in, in, in my non-scientific description, you know, if you think of the intestinal tract as it's like a long tube, right? So mm-hmm. I think of it as a long if you, if you imagine a fishnet stocking with a very fine fishnet, those holes in the fishnet are created by nature to be the exact right size and shape to allow completely digested particles through into the bloodstream. So when you digest your fats, they, they break down to fatty acids. When you digest your proteins, they break down to amino acids and so on. And those smallest molecules are the ones that are 
permitted to go through those holes because they're the exact right size and shape. And when the amino acids are, you know, moved into the bloodstream, your body recognizes this as food, nourishment, everything's fine. When you have leaky gut, what happens is either because of something like fungus, sometimes it's because of processed foods or too much sugar or too much acidity, too much stress. If you imagine that some of those little holes have now been torn open and they're larger than they should be, what happens is the, the particles that get through now don't need to be digested down to their smallest component. They can get through before they're fully digested. And if you have an undigested particle in the bloodstream, your immune system is going to attack immediately. It's going to say, foreign invader, I don't recognize this, and mount an immune response. And that's also why so many people who have leaky gut have food sensitivities because the food and particularly the proteins are no longer recognized as something that's friendly to your body, they're recognized as foreign invaders that need to be eliminated. And you get this inflammatory response and you get all of these allergic responses, often delayed responses because it's happening when the food gets into the intestinal tract. So that's how I envision it in my mind. I always think of a fishnet and the holes that are the wrong size. And so what you're doing when you're healing leaky gut is sort of restoring that original weave that's the right size and the right shape for the food particles. And that's why when people heal leaky gut, often previous food sensitivities disappear because those undigested particles are not getting through into the bloodstream anymore. Right. And, you know, and I think it's, you know, when uh, Dr. Fazano was talking on the show, he was specifically talking about how every 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 protein that we eat uh, actually does get broken down entirely and that's that's what's meant to happen um, but there's only there is one protein that the body is unable to break down it only leaves fragments and that's the, the gluten the gliadin protein which ends up mm-hmm. having several large particles so inherently that um, not only triggers the opening of it, but then you know those particles come in. But but this this is really an important point that you're having is that that even foods and proteins that otherwise would break down um, if the gut is leaky, that just anything goes through there. And and as as Fazana was talking about. Uh, if it goes to the brain, you know, there can be implications, there, and it can trigger headaches, it can trigger even things like MS, uh, it, there can be seizures. Um, if it goes to the pancreas, even if you don't if you don't have type 1 diabetes, you can get it as a 70-year-old, right? It can, wow. wherever it goes, it can go to the liver, it can create, create havoc. So um, so that's, thank you for sharing that. Uh, that that was That's a real eye-opener for me as well in terms of really thinking about that differently. But we do need to go yet to another break. The time flies. Um, when we come back, folks, we're going to start focusing on on treatments. You know, what do you do? We're, we're, you know, it's pretty dark and dismal here, but um, what can you do? And, um, and so we will have that to look forward to. Don't go away. We'll be right back. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com. Or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. 
YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Today we're talking with gluten and sugar-free baker and best-selling author Ricky Heller about candida. Now, that's all may sound like an oxymoron, <laughs> a sugar-free baker, a uh, gluten-free baker. What is that? Anyway, she's for real, and she's awesome, awesome, and she's here with us today. Um, so before the break, we've been talking uh, earlier in the show about about candida, and those of you who have been with us can hear. It's a real bugger, I'm telling you, literally and figuratively. Um, and so it's something to take seriously that, that more and more doctors are becoming aware of. And, and as Ricky mentioned, there are some um, functional medicine doctors in particular and some integrative uh, physicians who are knowledgeable. You might be, have a hard time finding some of these people. I just, I just so you know, Ricky, last week I was just talking to someone who said they saw the doctor and the doctor said that Kendi does not for real. Uh, so there are still some doctors out there who are not informed. Um, and that's okay because, you know, you can just find good doctors. Let's just start there, first of all. With, you know, where would you recommend, um, any recommendations about uh, where to go to find uh, physicians who are more likely to be knowledgeable about candida? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, as I said, if, if, it, if I were starting today, I would definitely try to seek out a functional medicine doctor because they're kind of the marriage between the holistic and conventional approaches to medicine. So, um, you know, as an example, um, Andrea Nakayama, who's a functional medicine nutritionist who uh, wrote a chapter in my book, her approach is, is to use the science to diagnose and, if necessary, treat we, she takes as much as possible a holistic approach to treatment so that you're using the utmost of scientific you know, information to determine what's wrong and if there's a way to treat it naturally without drugs or without toxins, then you're going to use that first, but they don't eschew the, natural, the, um, the allopathic approach either. You know, as I was saying earlier, if I were in a situation where I needed an antibiotic, of course I would take it because that's the miracle of modern medicine. But I would always try something natural first if, if mm-hmm. that works. Yeah, and you know I'm allergic to just about every antibiotic family, so it comes by nature. Wow. That I, you know, in terms of trying to okay, find other go. alternatives, and there are other alternatives, which is great news. Yeah. Um, um, uh, and so, go ahead. Oh, sorry, and I was just going to say, you know, in my case, because even now there really aren't functional medicine physicians in Canada, so I worked with uh, a naturopathic doctor, and that would be someone else who would be a great person to uh, consult for Candida as well. Right, and and you know maybe just because I'm over here in BC, but we do have um, it's quite exciting actually over here in BC. We do have uh, some more integrative and functional medicine doctors on this uh, in this neck of the woods, even yeah. if it's not across Canada. But you do have it's really hard to find, and it's hard to get them as your actual GP. You usually have to pay um, you know addition. You know, it's like they're not usually you have to pay additional in terms of mm-hmm. getting some of the services because because of the very specialized services that they're offering but it's totally worth it, guys. Um, yeah. And I, and I want to say that if you're wanting a good place to start, as, as many of you know, Dr. Jill Carnahan, one of the leading functional medicine doctors right now, you know, she's a real leader for not just uh, uh, for her patients, but she's an educator for a lot of, of the physicians and healthcare professionals as well. Uh, she was on the show twice. She's going to be on again in, um, in probably October. But she, uh, she's a, she's not only a great person, so you can go on the TeresaNicasio.com website and click on Jill Carnahan, right, as one of the guests. Uh, on that page, not only do you have access to her website directly, but, um, and, and the shows that she's been on and some of her, uh, several of her, of her, uh, YouTube talks, uh, medical talks and so forth, but, uh, if you go to her website, which you can access that way, uh, she has a page on there that has, uh, like kind of a lot of resources 
for functional medicine doctors and so forth. So tons of resources on a great, great website. And um, and if it was me and I was really searching, I would just call her office. Uh, it's a three it's a three year wait to get on her wait list. I would wow. still get on her wait list. But then I would also ask her doctor uh, or her office if they have recommendations about anyone they would uh, suggest in your in your geographical area. And I would say probably anywhere in the world because she's she's very connected. And if you know if she's if she's able to give you or the, her office, the office is able to give you some of those resources, she would. So that would be a place to start. But on that front, you mentioned earlier uh, that you were you had a foggy brain, and then within 48 hours, you know the curtains unveiled uh, your brain again. Um, can you talk a little bit about you know maybe what what pharmaceuticals, what sort of medications are you've experienced that you know people have used that seem to have helped them, um, not that you're, again, a doctor, but just what you know about in terms of the conventional treatments as well as maybe some you mentioned about natural antifungals and, and recommendations you have around that. And, again, not recommendations as a medical person, but just as someone who's been in the world. Yeah, sure. And, I mean, I, I, I have come to believe only because I've now spoken to so many people who are dealing with this. You know, after a certain level of um, of seriousness, like, you know, if you're dealing with a really mild case, you might be able to treat it with diet and herbal supplements alone. But my personal feeling is that if it's more intense than that, you're going to need at least some prescription antifungals at some point because what you what you need to do is kill off the excess candida before your own body's immune system can take over and mm-hmm. clear the rest of the problem up. So mm-hmm. in my case, I, I didn't mention this, but it, I do tell the whole story in my book, so I won't go into detail, but I had a rash that went from my chest down to my belly button. And Yeah, this is mm-hmm. important. Skin rashes, guys. Skin yeah. rashes, especially if there's any itch, yeah. hello, it's a wake-up call. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I didn't attend to mine fast enough because I was in denial. And it got to the point where I had been to about seven or eight dermatologists. I had taken every cream on the market, and these are antifungal prescription creams, and they did not work. So I needed to take oral antifungals, and, in fact, I had to find a physician who was willing to prescribe to me longer than what most doctors would have been comfortable with because nothing could touch it at that point. It was so severe. So oh, I it um, must have been horrible. Oh it was I, I literally couldn't think of anything else. It was yeah, it was the most awful either. the most yeah. awful thing because it was also painful at the same time that it was itchy. Whatever. Anyway really, really yeah, bad. This is a, this is a reality and, folks, yeah. Yeah, and it and it, I remember thinking like this thing is growing before my eyes. I could see the edges of it spreading out over my body. It was horrifying. Mm-hmm. So I ended up um initially I was on nystatin, which is an antifungal that is often used for people who um you know, if they don't want it to go into the blood like I, I think if a, if a pregnant woman ha- and that, again this is just a guess but I know that you know it, it it apparently is not absorbed into the bloodstream it stays within the intestinal tract so if mm-hmm. you are in a situation where you don't want the effects in the bloodstream you would take the nystatin but that didn't do it for me so then I took fluconazole which is um, one of the azoles and it is it does infiltrate the bloodstream. And that's the one that I was on long term. And at the same time, I was also on the anti-candida diet and also taking herbal supplements. So I don't believe I would have had any kind of permanent change without doing all three. And apparently now there's a new class of antifungals. I don't know. I don't know what the actual class is, but amphotericin is is the one that originally was only um, intravenous. It was an intravenous drug, is like of last resort for for AIDS patients or other people with um, blood infections. But now it's available orally and in in fact, often doctors will prescribe it as a na- within a nasal flush for fungal infections of sinuses, sinus infections. So um, I haven't taken that one, but I, I am familiar with it. I've, I've read about it. So um, those are the, the three main ones that I know about. But I have much more experience with all of the herbal supplements and the natural treatments because that's what I have been taking for much longer and that I feel provide you with more of a permanent um, Change and so mm-hmm. that's things like garlic or oil of oregano or uh, that golden seal. There's a whole bunch of different ones that people take. Mm-hmm. And you have that in your book. You probably have lists of those sorts of things. Yeah, there's a whole list of all the different ones, and the thing is different ones will work for different people, so what you want to do is rotate through and see which one has the best effect, and mm-hmm. then those are the ones you might want to stick with. Yeah, or sometimes it's a combination which has the most effect exactly. um, that I found. Um, okay, well, we're, we need to go to another break. And um, 
This is so great having you here. Anyway, guys, we have a little bit more time with Ricky, so uh, we're going to go to a few, uh, few of our sponsors, and then we will be right back. Don't go away. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. If you're like the 8 out of 10 women that say finding genes that fit is a problem, well, your problem is solved. Lee Genes has done extensive research, and they have genes that fit. There's even an online Lee Fit Finder so you can find the right fit for you. Imagine jeans that instantly slim you with a custom fit and no gap waistband. And guys, kids, Lee has jeans for you, too. Click through to Lee's Jeans on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and get what fits. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore a substitute ingredient so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! Plant-Based Recipes for a Gluten-Free Diet at Amazon.com or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place where we celebrate life, love, and kindness while also addressing the real challenges uh, that we, you know, are a natural part of our lives here on, on this planet. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're here today with holistic nutrition educator Ricky Heller. Um, she's one of the most passionate and compassionate educators about the challenges of living with candida overgrowth that I know, and she's been very, very courageous in sharing her story and, and the wisdom that she she has you know, she's sharing this on the show as well as in um, and she's written a book all about this as well. Um, just before the break, we were talking. We started talking about treatments, and we talked about some of the uh, conventional kind of medical treatments, prescriptions. But um, we also were starting to talk a little bit about the natural, some of the natural antifungals. And and uh, Ricky has a few more things to share about that. But then also talking a little bit more about getting into the diet, um, you know, kind of dietary changes and things you can do to help with um, candida that she talks about also in the book. So so what are some of the thoughts? So what are some of the other things that people can do from the, that natural perspective, uh, Ricky? So, yeah, there are a lot of compounds that we find in nature like, from trees, like tea tree oil, which you can't ingest, but you can certainly use on rashes and things like that. And uh, grapefruit seed oil, uh, grapefruit seed extract is another one. And we're finding recently, uh, you know, there's this whole boom in essential oils and the essential oil industry. And so a lot of these essential oils turns out that they're also antifungal, like uh, cinnamon oil and clove oil and those kinds of things. So I think that more and more we're finding more treatments that, and because we're becoming more international, you know, when I first started, neem, neem wasn't 
around it's from India, it's an antifungal from India that now people are able to access here. So I think as time goes on, we're going to find more and more natural treatments. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing I just wanted to quickly say about that is, you know, killing the fungus is one thing, but at the same time, you want to be building your own immune system and ensuring that if you have leaky gut, you're clearing it up. So I do have a whole list of different supplements that you can take for those kinds of treatments as well in the book. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And, of course, um, as probably most of you figured out, if you're killing a bunch of stuff off, uh, we want to keep supporting the microbiome. So you were mentioning earlier about yogurt and things, uh, you know, things that have some of the, the probiotics and prebiotics that help to feed um, the, the healthy bacteria. Are there any prebiotics that are problematic for um, candida, that actually feed the candida that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, okay. Good. Um, so, so let's let's jump into the fun part, the food and and the mm. diet, fun and the tragic. Um, <laughs> I'll save that on the side. Uh, you know, in terms of you know, there's foods that feed the candida buggers, and there's foods that that starve it, and there's there's foods that you can actually eat um, joyfully and uh, even while you're you're fighting this um, this this bug, uh, these yep. you know, this yeast. So, can you talk a little bit about that and again all this is the kind of thing you're going to find you're going to want to check out her book and I have I do I have um, links to her book you can get right from her page on the TeresaNicasio.com website that you'll just click on her on her name or her face or whatever you see there um, about the show and um, and so and then we'll have and she may have other resources over time that she wants to share that will be added to that page so so share right. away Ricky Sure. So, yeah, because I want people to, to understand that you can still eat delicious food as long mm -hmm. as it complies with the boundaries of the diet. So, you know, initially it's much stricter. You're, you're cutting out virtually anything with sugar in it, whether refined sugar or any kind of sugars. And some anti-candida diets don't allow any fruit at all. I was off fruit for two years at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you're going to cut out anything that can convert easily to sugar, so refined flours and things like that. Most diets also don't allow gluten, so you, if you have gluten, Grains, and some don't allow grains, but if you have grains, and I did, you would have only gluten-free grains. And you want to cut out moldy foods like peanuts and pistachios, as well as anything that's either going to contribute to the potential for candida or uh, put a strain on your immune system. So that means cutting out processed foods, and that means cutting out highly allergenic foods, which is why most diets veto things like eggs because they're one of the top eight allergens. So mm -hmm. most people, you know, when they come to me, they're like, oh, my God, what am I going to eat? <laughs> so I will say also that the book has over 100 recipes, and mm -hmm. that was the thing for me that was um, – you know, you were mentioning that I was a baker, and so the big challenge for me was how can I recreate the foods that I love, love, love without feeling deprived so that they still taste delicious and they comply with the diet. And that's kind of been my mission since I started this in 2009, and I feel that now I'm really at a place where, you know, I – I often will feed these foods to guests or if I have a dinner party and my husband eats whatever I eat and people don't know the difference. It, it, mm -hmm. I'm at the point where I am totally happy with my diet and I do not in any way feel even the slightest uh, pull towards the old sugary foods or, or those kind of cravings anymore. And as someone who really, like I said, is a sugar addict, I used to eat sugary things multiple times every single day. I never thought I would get to that place. So it really does get better and it really does change, but it is challenging at the beginning, and that's why you want to find a good practitioner who can, you know, give you the right supplements and the right prescription if necessary and have someone who can help you stick with it because I find when most people fall off the program, it's not because they don't know what to eat and it's not because they don't have the right supplements or a protocol. It's because they either get tired of eating that food because it seems so plain and bland to them because they don't know how to cook it or they don't know how to turn these ingredients into something interesting or they miss their favorite foods because they don't have alternatives from mm -hmm. within the program. So, exactly. um, And that's really what I help people do is learn to live this way in a way that feels great and they can still have fun with food and love it. So um, you were asking about foods that actually kill candida. And so, again, a lot of foods have natural antifungals in them, but I'll just tell you the top two. Um, coconut oil, which mm -hmm. contains caprylic acid, which is a potent antifungal. And then one of my favorite foods to eat or cook with is garlic. Garlic mm -hmm. is, you know, a fabulous antimicrobial, broad-spectrum antimicrobial in general, and mm -hmm. it's great for... Cooked, uh, cooked or raw or both? 
It's better in terms of its antifungal properties. It's better uh, as an antibacterial as well if it's raw. But even cooked, you're still getting some benefits. And so mm-hmm. um, it will depend, you know, how you feel. Sometimes when I'll do a green juice in the morning, I will throw in a clove of garlic in my juice. And, and mm-hmm. you know, I don't taste it when it's in the whole juice, and that's a great way to get some of the raw benefits. But if you can't tolerate it that way, then I would say have it cooked. And some people's guts, it's a, it's a bit it's a bit challenging to, to exactly. do that. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, and, and, and we're going to be having to, to wrap up pretty quick here, but one thing I'll say is, is, is really it's important when you are trying, and I talk a lot about this in, in all of the things that I'm doing as well as, as, as Ricky, that, you know, don't be hard on yourself because it's, if the cravings are coming because those buggers are hungry and yeah. they want you to eat those sweets and, and processed foods and, and uh, so forth, those, those carbs. Um, so, so, you know, be gentle with yourself and be patient and, and do get some support um, along this journey. Um, so then, we're going to have to be coming to a close. It's so sad. I love hanging out with you, and I'm oh, sure all of you are listening. Fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again for, for coming on the show. Um, if you have a, just a quick, like, you know, one or two sentence takeaway that you really want people to, to uh, take with them today? Yeah, you know what? If there's one thing I would say is that we need to remember for each of us that we are unique and our DNA is unique, and so if you go online, you're going to find, I, I jokingly say, there are as many anti-candida diets as there are anti-candida practitioners, mm-hmm. and that's almost true. So you really need to find what works for your body because there is no one diet or one solution that's going to work for everyone. And it might be a bit of trial and error, but that way you're going to find something that will provide a permanent solution for you. Perfect, yeah. And, and again, um, I have I have links for her books on the website, but also, um, just so you know, there's going to be links for Ricky herself and her website for uh, – because she also does coaching, as we mentioned earlier. So if you want some, some support, she also has group kind of things she does online. She's got all kinds of great things, so you're going to want to check that out. But for now, it's time for us to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've all enjoyed the show. Uh, be sure to tune in next week when radio show host Marianne Pestan is going to be joining us talking about making every moment count. Um, so and today, I'm Teresa today and tomorrow and every day. But anyway, I hope that this has been a great, a great time for you um, enjoying the Dr. Teresa Nicasio show. Until next time, have a great week.